Oh. Hi, we're the Franklin Quilt Company, and we have a shortcut binding tool demonstration to show you today. This is a new technique that's out there on the market. What I'm going to show you with the ruler is that we are going to cut a binding and a flange all in one unit. So the one, the one side here, the one and three eighths and the one and three fourths is what I will be cutting my flange and my binding. And then the other side of my ruler is to, to make a two sided binding. So one will be cut one and three fourths inch wide and one will be cut seven eighths inch wide. Now the end of my ruler is to use to put my two tails together when I'm putting my binding together. And I will show you that, how it's used when we're cutting our ends of our binding. So now I'm gonna show you how what we are going to be doing. So I'm going to take my ruler and I will cut my widest strip, that's the one and three fourths inches. This is for my flange fabric. So you're going to cut all your strips that you will need for your flange. You're going to piece all your pieces together of your flange end to end, and you will have you will need to cut enough for the perimeter of your quilt. The second cut that you will do will be for your binding. The binding is cut the one and three eighths. So again, you will cut enough strips that you will need for your in for the entire perimeter of your quilt. You'll sew your pieces together end to end to equal that measurement. So now once you have those two sewn and pieced together, then you're gonna take the two separate pieces, gonna lay them right sides together, and you're going to stitch a quarter inch seam all the way down to uh, put the two pieces together to create one unit and it will look like this when you're finished. So you have your quarter inch seam. Now you're gonna take that, you're gonna press that seam towards your binding piece. Then you're gonna take that and you're gonna fold it in half with your raw edges even and seeing that creates that flange unit right there. So now I'm ready to place that onto my quilt. I'm going to demonstrate today with little placemats so you can see how that's done. So you're going to place your binding. You're going to start with your binding. You're going to sew it to the back of your quilt. You're going to take your binding fabric and it's going to be face down to the back of your quilt. You're going to leave about an 8 to 12 inch tail to start with. You're going to stitch that down to the back of your quilt like you would a normal binding. The one thing that I have always had problems with is where do I stop at my corners when I come up to a corner. So what I do is I stop a couple inches away. I'll take my binding, fold it at a 45 degree angle to my corner, crease that fold line on the 45 degree angle, then I'm going to open this up and that crease line will show me exactly where I need to stop before I get to the end of my quilt for my binding. So I would stop my crease line, back stitch, I would take my quilt out underneath my foot, fold this back up at the 45 degree angle and pull it right back down. You want to make sure that your fold line is not out beyond your quilt and your edges or even with the side of your quilt. I usually start in about a quarter of an inch from the edge, back stitch out and continue down. I'm going to do that to all four corners. You're going to end up with approximately 12, 15 inch space so we can put our two tails together. So putting our two tails together I am going to take this right side of my binding because I've stitched it to the back of my quilt. I'm going to take the right side of my binding, I'm going to lay it even for at the end of my quilt. My quilt is laying away from me. I'm going to take my right side of my tail and I'm going to flip him back. Then I'm going to take my left side of my tail, bring him up close to my right side. I can maneuver this to wherever this may need to be. So I'm going to do this. Then when I pull those, I don't want them together. I want to leave about a quarter inch space. 
And then I'm going to take where I folded that, I'm going to crease those two lines. You really want to crease them, or if you're at an ironing board, I use my ironing board and I press that. So now I am going to open up, and this is what I call my right side of my binding. As you can see, I'm on the wrong side of my binding. Now I'm going to take my shortcut binding tool and show you how we're going to cut this diagonal line to put our two tails together. This says top right with an arrow crease line. So I have it in my right hand. I'm going to place that crease line right on my crease line. This is my top right. And then I'm going to mark right at the end of my ruler. And I'm going to cut on that line right there. Now I'm going to take my left side, open him up. Again, I'm doing this on the wrong side of my binding. Take my ruler, half turn, left hand. Now it says bottom left, crease line. If you cannot read the two words here, you have your ruler in the wrong position. So reposition it so it says bottom left. I'm going to place that bottom left on my binding, crease line, and draw a line at the end of my binding. And now I'm going to cut on that binding right there on that diagonal line. So here I have my two diagonal lines cut. This is like the normal way you would put a binding together. This technique you can use for any binding. It doesn't have to be just our flange and uh, binding technique. For your plain two and a half, two and a quarter, or two and a half inch cut binding double fold, you can use the same technique to put your two tails together. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch them right sides together, line them up so because uh, I have this quarter inch little notch. So I'm going to line that up right there, line this other end up right here, and I'm going to stitch a quarter inch from top to bottom. Now since I have my flange and my binding seam here, you can see they may not always match. So I may have to tweak that just a little bit because I need those two seams to match. So I can always put a pin right here so I can see if that matches and tweak it. Because the reason that they may not match is if you've not sewn your seam correctly on one side or the other side. So if you have a little bit of your end hanging out, that's okay. It doesn't make any difference and you're still gonna sew this with a quarter inch seam all the way down. So now what you're going to do is you're going to check to see if your two seams match. And if they do, then you're gonna press that seam open fold it together and you're going to continue stitching your binding to the back of your quilt. Remember that quarter inch space I told you about earlier? Well now, because your binding gives a little bit and it's going to fill in that quarter inch space and you won't have any pleats or little dimples into your binding. So once that is done, now we're ready to take our quilt binding. You see it's on the back of my quilt, now I'm ready to pull it to the front of my quilt and I'm going to use the little red binding clips to hold my bindings in place. Now if I, when I stitch, I am stitching in the ditch right next to my binding. My top thread is the color of my flange and my bobbin thread would match my backing. I've used green here so you can see that. If I had used cream, fab, cream thread, you would not be able to see that. So my second tip is, as you're stitching along, I'm always pull the opposite side in first. I'm stitching here. Pull this opposite side in first before you get to the corner, and then pull the side you're working on in. That distributes the bulk on either side. Now you can just continue on up to your corner, put your needle down, pivot, and continue stitching your binding all down to your, to your uh, quilt. 
This is a little placemat that we've done. You can see the piping right here. I have nice mitered corners and it will be a finished product. In a matter of a few hours, you can have your binding onto your quilt. The one thing that I know I forgot to tell you about a little bit earlier is when you are stitching your binding onto your quilt, you need to be using a walking foot because that will help to feed your bindings together and your quilt together at the same rate of going through your presser foot. And then when I'm stitching in the ditch, if you will use an open toe foot or if you have a stitch in the ditch foot, that will help you to keep that straight line right there and see where you're stitching in the ditch. So I hope you have enjoyed our uh, little video here on how to put a binding and a flange together in one technique. It's all machine stitched. There's no hand stitching done. So we're the Franklin Quilt Company. You can contact us at um, the, the, um, our website is thefranklinquiltcompany.com and our phone number. We also have a quilt shop called The Quilting Squares and it is 615 or excuse me it's 877-794-4769 or you can even go to the quiltingsquares.com website and all of our products are listed on there also for retail sale we appreciate you watching this and have fun with your binding and flange unit as one